Worship of the New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church, located at 754 East 77th Street in Chicago, where the Reverend Dr. Stephen John Thurston is pastor. This live broadcast is aired from 6 o'clock until 7 o'clock p.m. on radio station WGCI 1390 a.m. We welcome your phone calls, letters of encouragement, and your request for prayer. Your generous contributions assist us in spreading the good news through the airwaves of Chicago. Send all written correspondence to the New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church in care of Pastor Stephen John Thurston, Post Office Box 198-217, Chicago, Illinois, 60619 or call the church office at area code 773-846-3700. God bless you.
celebrate God tonight. Jasmine, thank you for coming back home. I almost felt a Maddie Moss Clark shoe coming. We celebrate God for your presence in this place tonight and for those who are streaming all across the globe. Can we celebrate everybody in the digital space? You know what I always challenge you to do? Be a digital disciple, electronic evangelist, smash the share button, jump in the comment section. You may meet your boo there. It goes down in the comment section. Let us know where you're tuned in from. We always enjoy connecting with you, building fellowship with you in that digital space. And thank you for all of the older members, the new members, Lottie Dottie, and everybody in here tonight to celebrate 45 years. of amazing ministry, life-changing ministry, groundbreaking ministry, future-focused ministry. This is a special occasion on so many levels first time in the history of this church that a pastor has retired. Every other transition has been the result of death. And we're excited tonight that this is not a funeral. That he's not stretched out here in front of us. But he can witness all the love we're going to show on him and pour on him and douse on him and surround him with tonight. Just simply to say thank you for all that he's done, all that he's been. And I mentioned it this morning, he's retired. And so let me reiterate it again because some of y'all wasn't here, you wasn't tuned in. Retired means it is finished. And somebody's saying, what's finished? Being at church every Sunday, it is finished. Preachers, pastors, don't call him, bothering him, bugging him, preaching. Come, come preach for me, Doc. No, it is finished. He's preached all the preaching he's going to preach. It's time for him to relax, enjoy life, sit back, do nothing. And so he and my mom are not to come into this building for the next three months. I put a restraining order on the both of them. They can't come nowhere 100 feet from here. You're going to get arrested. He's not to come here, and we've made sure that he's taken care of for the balance of his life. Wherever he wants to live, whatever he wants to drive, all of that. It's all good. He's handled. He's taken care of. And so we just want to have a flashback tonight. We kicked off. Y'all know how we used to do coming on the air at 6 o'clock. So just a little flashback. And then to have all of these choir members here, everybody came back. And New Covenant has a sound, and y'all still got that sound. And so we thank you. We appreciate you. Listen, I shared before that we're not going to be here all night. By 730, we'll be on our way to the crib together. Watch your watch. Check me. I promise you I'm a prophet. We'll be walking out of here. But we've got some special guests that have come to share tonight. I recall being called there at Salem. Uh, Denise called me down to my office and she said, Pastor Stevie, Reverend Evans is looking for you. Call him immediately. He wants y'all to come to the house. And so he wanted to have a meeting with me, Dad, and Reverend Meeks uh, to share some things with us that night. And this was just a few weeks before he made his transition. And so we had a great conversation, went down memory lane, and then prayed. And Pastor Meeks and my dad were talking, walking out of the room. Reverend Evans called me back. And he said, come here. He said, I'm counting on you. You're here to make sure the both of them are all right. I'm counting on you. Slapped me on my hand and told me to go on about my business. <laughs> I made sure Reverend Meeks retired. Came back, made sure my dad retired. Yeah. Pastor Evans, I hope I'm doing everything you asked me to do, sir. <laughs> Claudette is here and she's gonna share because Reverend Evans was dad, he was grandfather. He was the Godfather. And so we could not have this moment go by without hearing an Evans voice in this place. 
So Claudette, come on and do what you do as you represent the family. what my father would say. But let me tell you, I know I'm not him. So I'm going to do this. Okay? And he also would have looked at the program. Um, Reverend Nephew Stephen, you would not be able to get up here and announce anybody because after they sang the Lord's Prayer, he would come up here. Now, let's see. All right, when you see your name, get up. If you don't see your name, stay seated. My father referred to Reverend Stephen Thurston Sr. as his son. My mother called him Ruth's son. Yet I affectionately referred to him as my big brother. We're not related biologically, but the Thurston and Evans are family. And what God has joined together, y'all know the rest. Each time we speak, he say, how the boys treat ya. Do you want me to talk to the Lord about them? And you know, Reverend always has a humorous quip on any and everything. He and my dad had, they would tell jokes like, you're going to go to hell if you ain't going to stay long. <laughs> Duke Covenant has a rich legacy which lends us to understand the great legacy of this being a great church. But I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard like Reverend Elijah, I heard Thurston would say, I heard my father, the late Reverend Clay Evans say that Reverend Stephen Jr. reminded him so much of Reverend Elijah Thurston. It's a legacy. I would like to paraphrase Acts 13:36. Reverend Stephen Sr., Mrs. Ruth's son, my brother, like David, you have served to the will of God in our generation and contemporaries. Past president of your national convention, succeeded your father, buried both parents and two sisters, built this beautiful edifice, pastored a congregation full of Negroes, <laughs> counseled many, and with my bonus sister, Mrs. Joyce Thurston, raised a family. You have served. The end of that scripture said, David took his rest. Brother, just go home. Pull the covers over your head and know that everything will be all right with Reverend Stephen Jr. And as daddy would say, it's all right now. My mother would say to you, when you have done your best, take solace in knowing that all the Lord requires is your best. Big brother, I'm going to conclude with my favorite scripture, Philippians 1.6. I am convinced and confident that the Lord who has done a great work in you will complete it and rejoice, enjoy, and remember you've got angels dispatched watching over you. I love you budges.
good evening. I am blessed tonight to stand before you to offer tribute to my father, Reverend Stephen John Thurston. I have had the privilege of listening to many tributes over the past few months, highlighting the impact my father has had on friends, colleagues, members, and family. After listening to everyone's acknowledgments and testaments about him, I was almost tempted to change the theme of my own tribute, as it seemed to highlight the same characteristics that have already been mentioned. However, after continuous thought, I was reminded that the continuity of my dad's character is a beautiful consistency to have, because what better legacy to honor and acknowledge than that of a man of family, friendship, and faith. My father has always been a man who cares deeply about his family. When his parents passed away within months of each other, he stepped up to the plate without hesitation to make sure his siblings were supported. He still takes that role very seriously to this date, even continuing to call his sister, baby Kathy, even though she is fully grown with a family all her own. My father has carried over his role as a provider and a protector into his own family. He did and still does do whatever it takes to provide for his family. After birthing their fourth child, my mother was able to transition out of her career as a teacher and into the role as a stay-at-home mom. Because of this, she was able to be there for our family and take care of the household while my mother took it up, I'm sorry, while my father took it upon himself to solely provide for the family. My mom was able to be there for every school event, send us off to school each morning with a homemade breakfast, and receive us each afternoon and cook us a homemade dinner, taxi us around to all of our extracurricular activities, and be a known constant in our everyday lives. Even as we've grown into adulthood, my father and mother continue to provide unconditional support, always providing a safe space for us, never judging us, supporting us in every decision we make, helping us out in any way we need, and giving us assistance to reach our goals. My parents had three children in college at the same time and yet none of us know what a student loan is. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to college that I fully understood the blessing I had having you as a father. I was introduced to peers who had countless stories about not knowing their father, not having an active father in their life, or having toxic relationships with their father. On the converse, they would sit amazed at my stories of growing up in a two-parent household, having constant family dinners, having an active father in my life, and even going on family vacations, which started when we were all in college because my father wanted to ensure that we maintained our family connection even while we were spread across the country. It was then that I realized how rare of a gem my father is, and I have never lost sight of that. If you were at the Roast and Toast, you heard my sister share that my father was always on the road preaching while we were growing up. Admittedly, there were times when I didn't fully understand why he would always have to leave every week and why sometimes he would have to choose church work over family time. But I had to learn and come to an understanding that my father was fulfilling his role as a provider, as well as presenting himself to the world as an example of what a strong black father is. <laughs> Besides my college friends, there were and are many other people who come into contact with my dad who haven't had the best representative of a father in their lives. 
I am humbled to be able to share my father with those who have been able to glean from his example. And in turn, I am blessed to know that he has helped to stop some generational cycles and mold active black fathers in the community. Oh, and please know my parents do not play about their children. They will turn into mama bear and papa bear at the drop of a hat to protect their children. My dad even threatened to fly out to DC to see me because I did not answer his phone calls. And even as adults, my dad will not let us out of his sight. No matter where we're going or what we're doing, he will do his best to make sure he is right there in the midst of our outings and shenanigans. Not only has my dad been a great example of a family man, he also exemplified the importance of friendship throughout my life. My dad always lights up when he's around his friends and family, and I've grown up hearing countless stories of his college escapades with his friends. I have always admired the lasting connection that my dad has been able to sustain throughout adulthood with his friends. And because of that, I knew it was important to forge these connections of my own, as those friendships have the potential to last throughout my life. And because of his example, I've been able to maintain long-lasting friendships with friends from childhood, high school, college, and beyond. He's always displayed the positive aspect of friendships, as I've never seen him argue with friends or terminate friendships even when they have openly done things that would justify the end of friendships. And now why? I haven't reached that last level of loyalty. <laughs> if for nothing else, my dad is getting into heaven on that aspect alone. What I have learned about friendship from my dad is that a friend is loyal, supportive, provides assistance when needed, loves unconditionally, is non-judgmental, and becomes an extended branch of your family. Friendship is truly one of the greatest gifts in life, and I couldn't have had a better example of how to be a friend. Lastly, my father has taught me so much about faith. My father relies on his faith to lead his family, lead this church, and make every important decision he's ever faced in his life. What I love about my father's faith is how open and transparent he is about it. He never shies away from stating, I don't know the answer, but I know who I'm giving the problem to. And his method hasn't failed him yet. My father's faith has led him to achieve some incredible achievements. And even in times of question or sorrow, he has leaned on his faith to pull him up and lead him through situations. But it's not only his faith in God and in himself that is admirable, it's also his faith in me. He prays for me and my journey in life. He believes in me more than I believe in myself sometimes. At times I've called with doubt in my message and mind, and he'll remind me, you're Denise Thurston. Why wouldn't this work out in your favor? When someone else pours that much belief in you, how could you not return the favor and believe in yourself? My father has been a gift to me, and I wouldn't trade him for anyone in this world. I am a proud daddy's girl, and anyone who knows me knows this to be true. He has given me so much given so much to my family, his friends, his church, his colleagues, his members. And I want him to happily receive this gift of retirement that he has rightfully earned. He has given so much of himself to his ministry, and I am so happy that he is now in a position of receipt, and we are able to give to him a portion of all that he has given to us. My prayer is that you take this God-given gift of retirement and allow yourself to unwind and do all the things in life you enjoy without the burden of responsibility to this church and to others. You have done well. Your Father and Eternal Father in heaven 
are immensely proud of you, as am I. Love you. me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream he restores my family and he helps me to do what I ask him the most that's why I'm saved that's why I'm saved. Ha. That's why I'm saved. I'm safe in his arms. Bring it, bring it. Because
Missionary Baptist Church. Under the leadership of Reverend Sharp, Fellowship Chicago has experienced astonishing growth in all aspects of ministry. Sharp earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Religion from Morehouse College, a Master of Theological Studies from Vanderbilt University Divinity School, and a Master of Theology degree from Candler School of Theology at Emory University. 
Reverend Sharp is one of the charter members of the Academy of Preachers, was one of the youngest inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers at Morehouse College, and taught as an adjunct professor in the Religion and Philosophy Department at Morehouse College. Among his many distinctions, Reverend Sharp is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. In December 2015, Reverend Sharp married the gifted and talented Brianna Sullivan Sharp. Get on your feet, New Covenant, and welcome Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. Come on and let's give God some praise tonight. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. On this Resurrection Sunday evening, give God some praise in this house. And while you're clapping, can we thank God for a giant, a general, God's preacher, a man with the gregarious spirit. Help me thank God for the one and only Dr. Stephen John Thurston Sr. We celebrate you, man. You deserve all of this and some. New Covenant, where are y'all tonight? Come on, make some noise for this great church. Amen, amen. You may take your seats. I am so, so, so honored to be here, and I leaned over to Reverend Stephen Thurston, Jr., who is another man we need to celebrate tonight because he's about to be the Joshua to a Moses. Can we thank God for Reverend Stephen Thurston, Jr.? Come on, help me celebrate him. We're praying for you, and you have siblings, brothers, and sisters all over this city that will have your back in this next season of New Covenant's life. I leaned over to them. I said, y'all set me up tonight. All of these preachers in this house, I'm talking about legendary preachers in this house, and they put me up to preach tonight. After I preach four services at Fellowship, barely have a voice with every pastor Every bishop, every evangelist, every prognosticator of the gospel, please stand so I can acknowledge you tonight. Come on, help me thank God. O-M-G. Come on, help me thank God. We got some preachers in the house. I see you back there. And I want to just jump into the word, but I can't do that because you have so many living legends in the room. When Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson is in the room, you got to honor him. You've got you to gotta celebrate that. Come on. You got to celebrate that. Yes, Lord. When his son, the Honorable Congressman Jonathan Jackson, is in the room, you got to celebrate that. When Mama Lou is in the room, the last living founding member of Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Y'all help me show some love, Chicago. Oh, that's special. And to this great cadre of preachers of the gospel, Reverend F.D. Sampson, uh, Reverend Larry Howard, to all of these, Dr. Pointer, Dr. Charlie Dates just walked in. Jesus Christ. All right, now who just want to get the mic and come on and talk about Jesus for a minute? And you cannot celebrate Dr. Stephen John Thurston and not celebrate his lovely wife who's been right there with him all these years. Come on, help me celebrate Mama Thurston. And she's looking good tonight. Put the camera on her. Put the camera on her. We're not going to be in here all night long to everybody, to Lottie Dotty, everybody. Look at the person beside you and say, I'm glad to see you too. I'm glad to see you too. And there's one more group that has sacrificed more than a lot of people, the Thurston children. 
Can we thank God for their sacrifices of sharing their father with us all of these years? God bless you. Y'all stand up. Y'all looking good tonight. You put on your Easter clothes. Come on, stand up, stand up. Look at them, look at them. In church, I know there's a God. I know there's a God. <laughs> I love y'all for real, for real. And to, to Fellowship Church that has allowed me to serve as their pastor for five years, wherever you are, make some noise, Fellowship. I love you. Thank you for being here tonight. We came because we loved you. I'm not going to pretend like I have a check in my pocket for you tonight, but before this week is over, fellowship is going to sow into your life to let you know we appreciate what you mean to our church and to the city of Chicago. God bless you. Come with me to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. I'm good and sleepy like everybody else, but I'm asking the Holy Ghost to sweep through the room and help us all. Thank God for my mother and my mother-in-law who are in town from Atlanta. We're glad that they're with us today. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. There's a brief word that God has given me that I want to share as the Spirit shall guide. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Once while Jesus, out of the New Revised Standard Version, once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. Everybody say nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets. Let the church say nets. Let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, now listen, let me keep it 100. We've been out here all night, and we haven't caught jack. We haven't caught a minnow, a tadpole, a crappie, a brim. We've caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. Let the church say nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets, let the church say nets, were beginning to break. I want to talk today from this thought very simply with the help of the Lord. Notes from the nets. Thank you. You may be seated. Notes from the nets. Normally, when a preacher peels open this particular pericope, the preacher focuses in on Jesus' teaching voice. And oh, what a teacher he is. He's a master rabbi. In Greek, he's a didakalos. Jesus is a teacher. More, more than just a man walking around healing people. He was a teacher. Yes, he was a savior of the world, but he was a teacher. When you tune in, you could hear Jesus stepping into Simon's boat, teaching people from the shore. He told Simon, push out a little bit on the water. And some scholars suggest the reason he wanted them to push out a little bit is because the waves of the water created a sound system that would bounce against the bank of the shore. His voice was so important that the crowd pressed upon him. And he said, just push me out a little bit because I need my voice to carry. And Jesus' teaching voice can be heard in the text. There's another voice we hear in the text. kind of sounds like my voice, Simon's tired voice. Because then when Jesus finished teaching, he turns to Simon, whose name will one day be Peter. And he says, launch out into the deep for a great catch. And Simon looked back at Jesus and said, now, I, I don't know where you've been. But we've been out here all night, and we haven't caught anything. Have you ever given your all and had nothing to show for it? Have you ever sacrificed a lot, and when you looked at what you had at the end of the day, it did not match the energy that you invested into that project. And you looked to be Jesus and said, now I know you Mr. Jesus, but, but I'm Mr. Simon, and we, we, we've been out here all night. And we haven't called anything. Yet, if you say so, 
we'll go out there and try again. I, I hear Jesus' teaching voice. I hear Simon's tired voice. But there's another voice. If you lean in a little bit in the text, I hear the voice of the nets tonight. And I hear the nets with their testifying voice. I hear these nets in the text saying, preach me, preacher. Because every time we go to this text, we normally focus on Peter's faith or Jesus' admonition. But I dare you tonight to let a net talk to you. Because if we lean in to the net's voice, you will hear that the net understands a whole lot what it feels like to be a pastor for 45 years. If you lean in to the net's voice tonight, you will, you will quickly discover that this net understands what it is to feel like a black person in America. If you lean in to the nets tonight, you will quickly discover that these nets, Auntie Claudette, understand what it feels like to be under pressure and to be used and to be called to carry something that's heavier than you. If you lean in to the nets tonight, the nets are just waving at us from the text saying, please. Please, preacher, lean in. I have something to say on this occasion of Pastor John, Stephen John Thurston's 45th retirement celebration. The nets are talking to us tonight. These were not just nets that had a handle on them. Scholars agree that these are trimmel nets. Let the church say trimmel nets. A trimmel net consists of three layers of netting with a slack, small mesh inner netting between two layers of large mesh mesh netting within which fish would get entangled when they thought they could get through one layer they'd get caught in the second layer I said there are three layers of netting with a slack small mesh inner netting between two layers of a large mesh netting and the fish would get caught thinking that they could get free trimmel nets are held vertically in the water by weights on the bottom and it floats on the top and so you would tie one one end of the trimmel net to one boat and you try the other end of the trimmel net to the other boat and they would go out in the water together and whatever gets caught in the net at the end of the catch, the two boats and the two fishermen would pull up the ends of the net and whatever was in it was the catch of the day. And the net told me to tell you, I have something for Pastor Thurston. I have something for Chicago tonight. If you're just willing to listen to the testifying voices of these nets. Do y'all want to know what the nets have to say? The nets first have to say, notice the service of the nets. Notice the service of the nets. These nets were only useful when they were in the deep, and usually fishermen fished in the dark, and they only were worth what they were created for once they got dropped. It's amazing to me that it only worked once it got dropped. The miracle happened after it was let down. Nothing was going to, I'm closer to you than you think I am. You see, when you are a net, you only can function at your full capacity when somebody lets you down. It's after you get dropped. It's after you're in the dark. And it's after you're in the deep. You see, the Sea of Gennesaret was 141 feet deep. It's Israel's largest fresh body of water. It's a lake and the nets were used in the deep. The nets were used in the dark and the nets were used once they got dropped. And I don't know who's around this house trying to act on a Sunday evening, but somebody ought to give God praise that I was at my best after I got let down. You don't know what it is to pastor until you are let down by people you lifted up. You don't know what it is to be a servant of the Most High God until you get dropped by people who are supposed to help you with the load you're helping them carry. Where are the folk in the room that can thank God? Although I got dropped, although I was in the deep, although it was dark, I did my best work in the dark. I did my best work in the deep. And I did my best work when I got dropped. Go on and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, those nets sound like me. And the reason we come to celebrate Pastor Thurston is because all these years after he's been in the dark, after he's been serving in the deep, and after people dropped him, he still came up catching fish. 
Oh, I need somebody to put a better praise on that. I know these seats are comfortable over here at New Covenant, but help this little black preacher preach and give God some glory that after all you've been through, I'm still fulfilling what I was created to do after you dropped me, after I've been in the dark, and although I've been in deep water. We came to say thank you because we don't know the days where it was dark but everybody else thought it was light. We don't know the days you were in the deep, but everybody else interpreted it as shallow water. We don't know the moments where you got dropped and let down, but I'm so glad God will fix you in a way that you're at your best after you've been let down. Oh, that's the service of the next. But the next, and I'm not through, I want you to notice not just the service of the nest, notice the supporters of the nest. Because the text says, when Jesus walked up on them, these two boats were on the shore, and the fishermen had gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. Uh, you, you see, although they didn't catch fish, it doesn't mean they didn't catch something. And there's sometimes trash in the nets. And there's debris in the nets. And there are rocks in the nets. And there's vegetation and weeds in the nets. There's sand in the nets. And because there are three layers of netting, it's easy for useless stuff to get caught in the net. But thank God for somebody that wasn't just using the nets but they love the nets enough to help wash them and preserve them because when you wash the net, you're not just eliminating trash, you're also making sure it's preserved for the next excursion. Because when you wash the nets, the nets needed the moisture out there in the hot Palestinian sun. And when you wash the nets, you ensure it won't break and become brittle in the heat. You need people in your life who don't just use you to go catch what they need, but they love you enough to support you to pour back into you once you've been used for their gain. And who around Chicago, after all of these Easter services we had, we came to be a supporter of the net tonight and say, Dr. Thurston, Chicago loves you. Dr. Thurston, we don't just want to use you. We came back to support you. And thank God, after 45 years, you still clean, man. You still in your right mind. Where are the supporters of this preaching net who can say, I didn't just come to take I came to give. And let me tell y'all something around here. You better watch who's in your circle because everybody in your circle ain't in your corner. And I saw a quote Dr. Dates the other day that says, stop being mad when people suck the life out of you and you keep giving them the straw. You need people around you that add something to you. Where are some Christians around here that can holler back at the preacher? Thank God for people that's not just leeches and don't just divide and don't just subtract. Where are the people? Thank God for the folk that add to you. Well, we came to be supporters of the next tonight. After all he's caught, we came to make sure he knows we're not just interested in pulling another hoop out of you. And we're not just interested in taking something else from you. We want to pour back into you. The service of the nets. Notice the supporters of the nets. But then watch the strain of the net. Verse 4 says, and when he had finished speaking, he told Simon, now put out into deep water and let down your nets for a great catch. Verse 5, Simon answered, now master, we've been out here all night long. We've caught nothing. But if you say so. I, I'm not going here, but can I just pull the call before a minute and, and just check my engine light for a second? Do I have any, if you say so, Christians? Yeah, that's what I thought. I heard 20 people. I heard 20 on this side, 10 on this side. Do I have any, folks, if Jesus tells you to do something crazy, even if nobody else supports you, just because he said so, you will go out and try again because he said so. They went out there. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish, slow down, that their nets 
were beginning to break. I wish I could articulate to you how heavy it is to carry this cross. All these fish in your net. And, and sometimes you look like you got it together as a pastor. But it strains you. I wish the preachers would holler at me. It's, it's stressful trying to care. I, I know we were made to do it. I know we were created to do it. But even though you're created with the functionality to hold the weight, it doesn't mean you don't feel strained. I'm talking to some mama in the room, and you love them little knuckleheads, but sometimes it's a strain. I'm talking to somebody right now. You pray they fire you next week because you're so tired of the job you're working at. If they lay you off, you would, just, you would just call it a vacation because you're strained. But the original Greek does not say the nets broke. It says they were beginning to break. Now, this is my fifth service of the day, so either y'all going to help me or no. Is there anybody around this house that can thank your God with all you've been under? You still have not broken yet. With all the pressure you felt, you still have not broken yet. Somebody ought to turn up on a resurrection evening and give God your best praise because after everything you've been under, it still did not break you. They lied, but it didn't break you. They started rumors, but it didn't break you. They were working against you, but it didn't break you. As a matter of fact, reach over and shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. Don't be bougie now. Go on and shake that hand like they owe you $20 and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I should have broken with everything I've been under. But I thank God I'm still intact. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. The lie didn't break you. The funeral didn't break you. The hospital didn't break you. Cancer didn't break you. Your enemies didn't break you. Somebody ought to rejoice that you're still intact. Let the redeemed of the Lord half by three people say it didn't break me it didn't break me half by three more people and say it didn't break me it didn't break me the devil tried it but I'm just like see me I may be black I may be poor I may be ugly but thank God I'm still here Praise them because you didn't break. Praise them because you're still here. Praise them because he kept you together. And you want to know why you're still here? Because the nets have three layers. The nets have three layers. The nets have three layers. One are they sharp? One for the Father. One for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad you made it. Where are the nets in the room? Where are the nets in the room that are so glad you were beginning to break? Can you do me a favor? and reach over and hold one more hand. If you already touched them, find somebody else and tell them, neighbor, I don't mean to bother you tonight, but tell them you need to know about the service of the nets. Tell them you need to know about the supporters of the nets. Tell them you need to know about the strain of the nets. But tell them one more thing, you need to know about the shift for the nets. 
The net said everything was looking bad until a man named Jesus walked on the shore. And my pre-Jesus narrative uh, looks a whole lot different uh, than my post-Jesus narrative. Uh, I wish I had a witness uh, on resurrection evening uh, that could just wave your hand to heaven uh, and thank your God for Jesus. Uh, because Jesus uh, makes the difference. Uh, the Nets and Dr. Thurston uh, have the same testimony. If anyone uh, should ever write uh, my life story, uh, for whatever reason uh, there might be, uh, Jesus will be there uh, between each line of pain and glory uh, because Jesus uh, is the best thing uh, that ever happened to me. Uh, the Nets and the pastor uh, can say I've had many tears and sorrow. Uh, I've, I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times when I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, the Lord gave me blessed consolation. He let me know that my trials only come to make me strong. So I thank God for my mountains. I thank God for my valley. I thank the Lord for every storm he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God to solve them. I would not know what faith in his word could do. Just point at somebody and tell them through it all. Y'all ain't pointing nobody. I said point at somebody and tell them through it all. I've learned how to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned how to trust in God. Is there anybody that can help this little preacher give God some glory? Because Jesus always makes the difference. Since his resurrection, can I tell you how he really did it? One Friday, he died. Didn't he die? And he died until the S-U-N got a text from the S-O-N that two sons can't shine at the same time. Oh, he died until the moon dripped in blood. Oh, he died until the earth gave up the dead. Died until the centurion soldier said, surely this must be the Son of God. They took him off the cross, put him in a borrowed tomb. I can't tell it better than some of y'all, but can I tell it the way I tell it? They needed a borrowed tomb, because they only needed it for the weekend. Stay there all night Friday. Stay there all night Saturday. But Y'all not gonna help me on Easter. Early Sunday morning, didn't he get up with all power in his hands? Shake one more hand like they owe you some money. Don't hold it like a dead fish, but hold it like you know Jesus. Hold it like you got the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't touching nobody. You can use sanitizer later. Hold it and look them right in the eye and say, neighbor, whatever you go through, remember, be not dismayed. Whatever, whatever retired you, because God will take care of you. I got three questions. Uh, won't he do it? Have you tried it? Ain't he able? Stay up.
to announce the open door. <laughs> the privilege <clears throat> of membership. The opportunity to confess Jesus Christ as your personal savior if you have not done so publicly. The opportunity to return to the church if you have for some reason or another strayed away. This is a mighty good time. on the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to declare that he is wonderful. Give me a flat major, please. Door is open. Wonderful. God is so wonderful. Wonderful. God is so wonderful. When I am sad, to him I go. the 
And oh, he's wonderful. Yes, he is. Accept or reject the divine invitation. Come on, let the people of God say amen. amen. Put your glad hands together one more time and praise God all over this building. Let's thank God for this marvelous and magnificent messenger. Dr. Sharp, let's give God a thunderous applause for him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my brother, for blessing us today. Thank you, Dr. Sampson, for extending the invitation to discipleship. Uh, my nephew said we were going to be out at 730. That means we have three minutes to raise a whole lot of money. Amen. This is a celebrative moment, and we uh, certainly want to uh, be a blessing to this fantastic, awesome preacher of God, Dr. Stephen John Thurston Sr. Come on, let's give God a hand for him. I, all of our lives have been blessed by him. We've been made the better uh, through his uh, preaching prowessness. Uh, he and I have been friends for more than 30 years. Our past have crisscrossed in airports. We've preached for each other over the years, and we fellowshiped and traveled together around the world. And I'm grateful today that myself and Lady Green have come from uh, New York to uh, celebrate with them, amen, this uh, retirement uh, from the pastorate and preaching. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful tonight. Are you grateful tonight that the Lord put Stephen John Thurston Sr. in your path. I want everyone real quickly, if you'll just rest on your feet, it won't take us a long time, if you'll just rest on your feet. We're going to move expeditiously. No talking, please. I want you to hear me. Uh, we're going to sow tonight uh, into the ministry of Pastor Stephen John Thurston he has labored. If we have sown unto you our spiritual things, it is right for us to reap your carnal things. And tonight, I want you to prayerfully consider what you will give uh, in this retirement celebration uh, to this man of God. I was here a few weeks ago preaching, and uh, I brought some more money with me today. 
Amen. I didn't come empty-handed. Amen. Uh, and I, I want all of the pastors who can, if you can, don't get mad at me for asking, but I want all of the pastors who uh, will give $1,000 tonight. $1,000. I'm asking you for 1000 Johnny Miller, God bless you. I just saw you the other day in Nashville. Man, you everywhere. Amen. I'm asking the pastors. Everybody remain standing, please. Amen. All right, Dr. Sampson, 1000 already in the envelopes. Amen. Amen. Dr. Edward Davis, 1000 Amen. All right. Any other pastors want to sow $1,000 tonight? Dr. Johnny Miller is going to give 1000 Dr. Joel Taylor is giving 1000 Dollars. Can I get five more pastors, about six, seven more pastors? Dr. Sharp is giving a thousand. Dr. Charlie Dace is giving a thousand. If I can get about five more. Oh, this is third check. He wants y'all to know. Amen. Y'all give Joe. That's what brothers do. Amen, Joe. <laughs> Amen. I need about three more pastors who will sow a seed of a thousand dollars tonight. Amen. All right. Amen. I know we have three more pastors. I'm not begging, I'm asking. I know we have three more pastors. All right, every pastor who will give $500 tonight, every pastor who will give $500 tonight. Amen, thank you, thank you, preach. Oh, they did it, all right. All of them didn't do it this morning. I've been pastoring long enough, no, all of them didn't do it. Amen, thank you, Doc. Thank you. Give me your name. We. All right. Bless you, Doc. Thank you so much. 600. Amen. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. 500. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Dr. T.J. Jemison used to say, if you're going to sit high, you got to pay high. Amen. But tonight, we're grateful. Thank you so much. Any other pastors? All preachers. All preachers in the house. If your ministries have been blessed by Dr. Thurston, will you come with $200? All preachers, all preachers, all preachers, all preachers. Do we, I saw a lot of preachers standing. Uh, we acknowledge a lot of preachers. Thank you, my brother, thank you. All right, where are the preachers in the house? Come on, come on. I'm looking, I'm waiting. Preachers, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all get this preacher a hand. Give him a hand. Thank you so much. $500. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask all of the persons who are in this place under the sound of my voice. This is a minuscule ask for a preacher of this caliber. This is a minuscule ask for a preacher. Hey, Doc. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, preacher. Thank you so much. This is a minuscule ask. Uh, Dr. Thurston has been pastoring this church for 45 years. That's a long time. Amen. He has emptied himself. He has left it all on the field. Amen. So I'm talking because somebody else is coming. I see it. Yeah, see, I, I can see money a long ways. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. I'm going to ask every person, if you've been a member of New Covenant, if you're still a member of New Covenant, if you're a returning member of New Covenant, if you've been blessed by the radio broadcast down through the years, or just the preaching ministry of Stephen John Thurston, if you will get $100 in your hand, please, please do that for me. Please, I know you knew this day was coming. We've been getting ready. Amen. We have been getting ready. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Bow your heads with me in prayer. And I want you to prayerfully consider sowing the seed in Dr. Thurston's retirement. Our Father and our strong God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. Thank you for all that you've been in our lives. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our risen Savior. Thank you for this wonderful day of celebrating the resurrection. Thank you for this 
awesome opportunity to celebrate this outstanding preacher, this pastor, this evangelist, this past president of our national and denominational body. Thank you for blessing his wife and children. Thank you for blessing the New Covenant Church. Now, Lord, move on the hearts, the altar of the hearts of the people who are gathered in this place that we call New Covenant. And may they give generously and liberally to your servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the gifts and the givers. And all the people said amen. amen. Do, the, do we march around, Steve? Oh, they go, okay. All right, no marching, okay. All right. Okay, there's a drop down for the uh, pastor's love offering on the giving app. You see on the, on the screens the different ways. Those of you who are watching, we have preachers and people all across the country who's been blessed by Dr. Thurston. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much. Who's been blessed by Dr. O Am I looking at this right? Brother Callahan. Him, they just gave a check for ten thousand dollars. My God, I don't live in Chicago, but if you have a loved one that passed away anytime soon, y'all call Callahan. I'm on Callahan's team. Amen. Y'all keep calling Callahan. Amen. Somebody say, Lord bless Callahan. Amen. All right. Are we moving through the aisles with the baskets? Let's move. All right, thank you so much. Please don't fold it up. Please don't fold your money. Thank you, thank you so much. If you're watching online, pastors all across the country, pastors all across the country who are watching online, please, please sow your seed. Go on the app. Go on the app. Amen. Give the fire. Amen. The Cove Shy. Amen. CoveChicago.org. Scan the QR code, the Cove, and you can mail your donations. P.O. Box 198217, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. If you're mailing it, if you're mailing it, send it to that address. Thank you so much, precious people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for staying. Thank you for not running out on the offering. Amen. Y'all know how some folk are. They enjoy all this good preaching. Shout on credit. Amen. All right. Has everyone had an opportunity to give? We don't want to omit anyone. We don't want you to get home tonight and say you forgot to give your offering. Ain't nobody taking money for the choir? Thank you for being honest. Amen. Choir members, can we get can we get some baskets for the choir? Amen. Amen. so much. Sharp is right. There's some preachers up in here, some preaching preachers up in this house tonight. Amen. But Sharp, you were the man. God bless you, brother. Y'all look at y'all look at Sharp and just say you're a bad mother, shut your mouth. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Are we ready? That's it? Okay. Let's re receive our lead pastor, Pastor Stephen John Thurston II. Y'all give him a thunderous applause. Thank you, Thank you for your giving tonight. We're about ready to go. Mom, if you'll come and share, can we celebrate our only lady as she comes? 
to make her final remarks. Okay. Allow me this moment to take this all in. God bless you for being here and sharing in this auspicious occasion. Known for revolutionizing basketball, it has been said that Michael Jordan changed the game forever. He came along at the right time, had the right skill set, natural abilities, and the competitiveness to take his team and the NBA for a ride that blew everyone's minds. To this day, he is still considered as the greatest player to grace the hardwood and aptly wears the title of GOAT, the greatest of all times. Well, friends, family, and members of the Cove, tonight we celebrate a true champion. <laughs> a man who, like MJ, embodies the very essence of what it means to be a leader, a role model, and a pillar of his community, Reverend Dr. Pastor Stephen John Thurston. <laughs> Successful in their own ways, uncanny parallels have been seen between the man that dominated the court and the man that dominated in the pulpit, both having the right stuff. 10 characteristics that champions are made of. I'm gonna go a little bit off the record right now. Um, 45 years, uh, a long time to do anything. And you've done that as the pastor of this church. And I've been around for 36 of those years. And now, while I might not have known what you were saying when you sung Father I Stretch, it all sounded like mumbles to me, I don't know. <laughs> but I do know the trademark of a preacher is to have three points. And so I'm going to give you ten points of an effective leader. Now, I don't need you to find the right key. That won't be necessary. Number one, your passion and purpose have been motivated by love. Love for God, his word, the church, and his people. For over 45 years, your infectious love has been so powerful that it has influenced and impacted a multitude of lives. Number two, expounding on the word of God, leading individuals to Christ, preaching and teaching all over the United States as well as abroad. Your ability to have effective communication skills have been shown. Your resonating voice and delivery have ignited the souls of people, bringing them to a place of acknowledgement and commitment to Christ and ministry. Number three, assuming the role of pastor at the age of 26 and the pushback from those who doubted your ability to handle the responsibilities. And then in 2008, with the completion of the new worship center, your mental toughness was proven. Number four. Through the years, you've learned to pivot and adjust your approach in order to achieve goals. Whether navigating financial situations, implementing new programs, or establishing progressive motives and initiatives in the life of the church, you've demonstrated the willingness to take calculated risks and showed adaptability and flexibility. Number five, when you decided that we, you, Mommy, Stevie, Nicole, Denise, and myself would live off love offerings, and mommy thought you were losing your mind, rightfully so. You demonstrated confidence and self-belief, for you did not let that fear hold you back, but you embraced the challenge and willingness to face the unknown. Number six, you have served on the board 
of the Chicago Baptist Institute, been the president of the National Baptist Convention of America Incorporated, president of the Illinois National Baptist Convention, held positions with various social, civil, and religious organizations while juggling church and family obligations is a testament to your resilience and your determination. Number seven, focus and concentration were on full display in 2007 when you wrote and published your first book, Attitudes, A Paintbrush of the Mind. While preparing weekly sermons and at times doing 25 to 30 revivals during a given year. Number eight, the value of teamwork and collaboration. You spearheaded and coordinated the joint winter board meetings in 2008, the first time in history that all four Baptist conventions met together. You led the World Baptist Alliance tours to Australia, Fiji, Hawaii, Seoul, Korea, Zimbabwe, Ghana, London, South Africa, Israel, Argentina, Brazil, and Hong Kong, and you served as President Obama's liaison and advisor from a faith-based perspective. <laughs> Number nine, your dedication and discipline has shown through, as you didn't just talk about your goals, but you worked towards achieving them. There's no better example of this than when you achieved your doctorate degree in 2023 at the age of 71. And number 10, lastly, champions are leaders. As a husband, father, friend, mentor, pastor, and role model, your leadership has been outstanding and noteworthy. You've been a, protect, a protector, provider, supporter, teacher, and even an ATM or an STM dispenser for numerous people. You've motivated, inspired, guided, and influenced. You've been loyal, compassionate, and have the ability to bring out the best in those around you. On a personal note, our lives have been intertwined since we were six years old in first grade. Who knew that God had this plan in mind way back then? But here we are today, only months away from celebrating 47 years of marriage. Thank you for sharing the journey with me. MJ said, you must expect great things of yourself before you can do them. Well, man of God, you dream big and achieve much through your faith, trust, and obedience to God and the calling on your life. For this and so much more, you are to be commended. Someone once said, life is not a solo act. It's a huge collaboration, and we all need to assemble around us the people who care about us and support us. To this end, there has been God, your coach, who prepared you to maximize your performance. He motivated, developed, and directed you to reach your potential. It was God who equipped you to lead a dream team. Now, as I call your perspective area, I want you to stand and remain standing. As point guard, the strategic visionary lead, executing moves, and one of the shortest players, we have P2, Steven. Consistent, reliable, and the backup stage director is the shooting guard, Denise. <laughs> Starting as power forward is Nicole, using her strength through her mouth, <laughs> blocking and protecting. As the tallest player who protects the rim and is known to be a good decision maker, who else but Chris, the center. <laughs> Covering multiple positions, the small forward, that would be me. <laughs> Versatile, highly skilled, and the energy boosters are all family members serving as the sixth man. Please stand, family.
providing reliable backup as the bench, our ministers, preachers, deacons, and leaders of the church. Please stand. Last but not least, our congregants and friends, your supporters and fans. That's all of you all. <laughs> Cheering, encouraging, and ramping up their favorite player. I am but one voice, but I represent many when I say that, you, that as you retire, we want you to know that we love, respect, and honor you. You may not be a hoops, hoopster on the court, but you are undeniably one of the greatest hoopers of the pulpit. <laughs> You are our MVP, most valuable partner, parent, pastor, patriarch, and proclaimer of the gospel. You are our champion. You are our GOAT. We pray that God richly blesses you as you turn the page and begin a new chapter in the book called Life. God bless you. I love you. As a family, have a few little gifts to give you. Or, so, you know, when a basketball player uh, retires, they give them a little something to hang up in the rafters. And so, we have a little jersey for you. <laughs> And then, you know, when you're a champion, they also give you a little something, something, something. A little special something. And we had a little something special for you in this little tiny box. You get your own ring. Now, before we go, we have uh, one more surprise for you. Um, I know you weren't expecting this, but we had somebody make a special call um, that we think you're going to really appreciate. So if we could uh, go ahead and do that and look at the screen. My name is 
Steven, it's Serena here. I um, was at this tennis match thinking about you and wanted to say congratulations to you and your retirement. You know what? Sometimes it's nice to be on the sidelines and kind of watch the match. So enjoy your sidelines. One goat to another goat. <laughs> now listen, if you act right and be on your best behavior during retirement, I'll take you down to Serena's house and let you play around the tennis with her. <laughs> you want to say anything? Hey, Amen. <laughs> Let me say thank you to everybody. Thank you so much. You have been for me, my wife, my children, and the man that's going to take over this responsibility here at the New Covenant Church. May the Lord bless you real, real good. Come on, uh, give God the glory for what he has done, is going to do. Uh, it's going to be God uh, for what he wants us to do. Here, the New Covenant Church, may the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you in this way. Can anybody say amen and amen? Thank y'all so much. Everybody in the digital space, everybody that came in this place. Dad, you going to shake hands and all of that? Greet the people very well. He's going to love on you, greet you. Uh, just don't give him COVID. If you got your mask, put your mask on. We want him to live in retirement. Amen. Pastor Kim, did Pastor Kim leave out? She left. All right. Pastor Johnny Miller, if you'll come and give us our benediction, sir. Thank you so much. Let's look to the Lord and be dismissed. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. <laughs>